Um, Get out your calendars for a second. Let me let, let me tell you stuff, something that we don't have supported with um, media right now is announcements. Um, and two Sundays from now, not this sun, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, we are going to have uh, somebody give me the date. Not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday, fifteenth, sixteenth. On that sixteenth Sunday, we are going to do our all right. We're <laughs> They're excited. We're going to be doing our Jersey Sunday, um, the 16th of October, which means everybody wear your favorite jersey. Is that where we find out who the rookie is? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, we'll just press the one, two. All right. Nothing happened. All right. There we go. Technical problems. <laughs> it's all good. Let's get this figured out. We broke all the chains. Now, now it's all. Now we're freeing all the cords. All right. So October sixteenth, Jersey Sunday, which means wear your favorite football jersey, your baseball jersey, basketball jersey. If you love the great left turn, Dave. If you love the great left turn, and you want to wear a NASCAR jersey. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you're a soccer fan. I brought uh, Bryce got all all mad. He's like. I looked through my closet, Dad, and I've been a Niner fan and a Giants fan and a Warrior fan my whole life, and you bring me a soccer jersey from Uganda when I went to Africa. He's like, really, Dad? Thanks. So, but uh, wear your favorite jersey in, on October 16th. At the end of October coming up, we are about to release a date. It will be on the website, and we're going to do a costume party uh, for the end of October that we're all going to celebrate at uh, probably... Mr. Nazaroff's house or my own house, one of the two. Um, but uh, we're going to have a date at the end of October that we're just going to get together and do family and wear costumes and have a great time, uh, play games, all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you some really cool stuff that happened last week at the park. We had some guests, and, and matter of fact, thanks for being here this morning. Give this guy a hand. Yeah. And then what was your name again? Mike, give Mike a hand. He's, he's new. This He wasn't at the park last week, but we're glad you're here this morning. Um, and uh, we, we had uh, two other families, and they are like, we cannot wait to make this our home church. There are a few, one of the families said they'll be back in like two or three weeks. Um, they're going on vacation, but after that, they're, they're coming back, and they're saying, I Am Movement's going to be their home church. We had a great time at the park. Uh, if you were here, we just had, we had a great turnout. We had great food. Uh, great. What's that? We won volleyball. I don't know about anybody else, but we won volleyball. I, were you on? Oh, you were on we. You're part of we. That's right. Wow. Come on, Madison's like D- Madison. Okay, bring up, bring up the picture. Bring up the picture, Andy, of the baby. So this is what happened for us this week. Massey, you want to ring her up real fast? Hold on. I'll... You want to unveil her for a second? She's like, look at my beautiful car seat. Look at my beautiful car seat. <laughs> Can you see? So this is my granddaughter. Landry Eloise. Avant. And she wasn't born in October. She she slid in September. Go ahead and give her a hand. <laughs> Worship was happening. We were clapping. Drums were going. Everything. You can tell she's our DNA. <laughs> good. At times she's looking around like, that's great. That's good. And then she just fell asleep in the presence. She, yeah, she's a great baby. She barely, barely cry. When she cries, she's just like me. You know, she's hungry. And so, um, so we, we, we absolutely love her and we are so proud. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud. I, I literally like drive home at like 120 miles per hour so I could get one more kiss in before I go to bed. All right. Um, also tonight I am leaving uh, for Los Angeles, I have a few people going with me. Actually, it's just uh, Bryce and Kyle. Um, can, can you go? So this is uh, Harry Mock. And Harry uh, and I went to, um, on this trip, we're in Montana. 
That is actually Whitefish, Montana. Um, and Harry Mock, little did I know, would, would die. Um, and Harry, this is Harry here in uh, probably about six months before he died. And this is Harry, as most people would see him in like Rambo 1, Rambo 2, Bloodsport, all those kinds of movies. He was friends with Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Sylvester Stallone and, and was the number one producer of um, Animal Crackers on Netflix, uh, was the number one uh, animation on, on um, Netflix. And on this trip, Harry was taking me to introduce me to uh, a gentleman that is, sits on one of my boards now. He's one of my investors on, in one of my companies, Dr. Robert Goldman. And Harry was taking me on this trip to in introduce me to that. On this trip, we're sitting in the bar, that exact bar, and uh, except that we were at the bar. And, um, and while we're at the bar, Harry starts um, confessing some really deep stuff, really hard stuff about things that he's done, things that he's not proud of, all that kind of thing. And... And he said, um, do you think that God could have forever, ever forgive me? And so at that bar, Harry then says that question, and I start to tell him that Jesus is so proud of Harry and that Jesus loves him because he 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 loves him and there is nothing that Harry could ever do to make God love you less there is nothing that you can do that will make Jesus love you more are you hearing me right now there is nothing you can do to make Jesus love you less and there is nothing you can do to make Jesus love you more he loves you because he loves you at this point he falls off the stool in tears and falls on the ground, and everybody thinks Harry's drunk. And they're like, are you guys okay? Do you need an Uber? Right? And, and so Harry's crying, and I'm leading him to Christ, and I lead Harry to Jesus not knowing that today I'll be celebrating his life with uh, all the grandmasters from all over the world, from China, Japan, um, all over the world, we're going to be in Los Angeles tonight at a red carpet event um, celebrating the life of Harry Mock. I will tell you, you might think you're on a business trip for one thing. You might think you're at softball for one thing. You might think you're on a hunting trip for one thing. And you need to be open to Holy Spirit. What are you doing on this trip? Are you hearing me? You might be... You might be Sole focus on winning that volleyball singling. And you know what? Sometimes you should give some mercy and let a guy win tennis every now and then. I'm just saying. But l listen, you might be so focused. Right? You might be so focused on why you're there doing construction. You might be so focused on that job getting done or that, or that event happening. But I'm telling you, there's a hairy mock in your world that you might think is so prestigious and so connected and has so much money and right and and they're so dialed in oh i don't want to bring up jesus wow. thank god and and this is not this is not braggadocious this is an invitation for us all to be strong are you hearing me this is a testimony of jesus that releases the spirit of prophecy right so let's identify i don't care how great the person is or how insignificant seeming the person might be. You never know if that is going to be your one opportunity to lead them to Jesus. Do we have music going on? Do, do me a favor, Josh, just ask the hotel manager to... Oh, Singling got it. Okay, thank you. All right, we have all these technical things. Holy Spirit, whatever you want to do today, we just say yes. Uh, I'm going to stop performing for a second. I'm just going to switch this up so I can have my hands free. It's okay. I'm just going to put it in my back pocket for this Sunday. And thank you. All right. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter uh, 5. Testimony of Jesus.
Testing one, two. It must have shut off somehow in my pocket. Lay hands upon the sick and they shall, right? All right, so Matthew chapter 5 is where we're going to start. And I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be the last part of this whole Be Light series. But how many's learned something in this Be Light series? Yes? All right. I want you to go to verse uh, chap- Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And Andy, I forgot to tell you, at the, if you go to the notes in there, uh, in, in my laptop, the last four bullet points are going to be at the end of notes. And you can cut and paste those if you need, if you need those. So here we go. Verse 14. You are. Everybody say, I am. That's a pretty good name, huh? <laughs> you say, you. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Not you are becoming. You're not becoming. You are the light of the world. You don't have to do anything to qualify. So a lot of times in this message of be light, oftentimes we're confused as to, okay, how do I become light? You're not becoming. You are the light. Get this. Here we go. Verse 17. Oh, was was that 17? Thank you. You are the light of the world, a city... Now, 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 that's a period. He, he changes a sentence. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does any light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Here's a big thing. Let. Look at your neighbor and say, Let. Look at somebody and say, let it happen. Here's the thing. Jesus, it, Jesus understood even though you're light, even though you are light, you have your own freedom. You have your own will. Just because you are light doesn't mean you are going to shine. Just because you are light, there is a lot of, I mean, we, we know this, right? There is a ton of Christian movements that there is no shining. There is no transformation happening. There is a gathering of lights, but it says not to just gather lights. It doesn't say just to illuminate, but it says to let your light shine. And then it gives direction to all men. Can you bring that verse back up? Sorry. Here we go. I'll look at it here. Let your light shine before all men in such a way that they may see your good works. Now, here's the whole thing. In most doctrines, you'll understand, oh, it's about God's good work. And Jesus' instruction was not for you to get God's good work. You know what Jesus wants you to do? Is have men see your good work so this this false humiliate this not humiliation this false humility that christians walk in of oh it's not about me it's all about the lord shut up (laughs) right don't do that why put on mute what god is trying to amplify God's not trying to amplify his voice and his actions unless he does it through us. So, so the actions of a man will give glory to God, but it's the actions of a man. God is not, he's, he didn't just commission you, he co-missioned you. He came alongside you and said, we're going to do this together. It's not all God know me and it's not all me know God in being light and I'm getting way ahead of my message in being light you have to understand that God wants you to shine so you might have to break some things off your life that says 
well, I don't want to shine. I don't want to be at the forefront. I don't want to, I don't want to be seen. I don't want to be heard. I, no, 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 no. Jesus asked, matter of fact, he didn't ask you. He commanded, let your light shine. I'm commanding you to be seen. There's a lot of people that are walking in life trying to not be seen. They're trying to be in the classroom and not be seen. They're trying to be in the room and not be heard. I want to just, and and a matter of fact, that's why you could go to a lot of different churches of 500 to 1,000 to 10,000 people, and a lot of people participate in those large communities for one reason, to not be seen. Let's deal with something. Why would I not want to be seen? Well, because if I'm seen, then I'm going to be not just accountable, because here's the thing, that, 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 Josh, I'm glad you said that, accountable, because that pulls on legalism, right? Oh, I'm going to be accountable to make sure I'm not smoking. No, you're going to be accountable to make sure you're on fire. Two different paradigms. Legalism says, I'm going to hold you accountable, and, and literally, because the church chooses accountability in the paradigm to make sure you're not smoking, that's why we'll go hide. Because accountability is, let me make sure you're not smoking. Instead of accountability, let's make sure you're on fire. Two different paradigms of accountability, right? One's wanting to knock you down, put you in your right place, right? The other one's trying to accelerate you. How many knows that there, I don't care, even all, being on part of the, some of the largest churches on staff, there is not one person I've ever met that is all dialed in. Yeah. Sitting in green rooms and TBN, Come on. not one person all dialed in. Yeah. Matter of fact, sometimes it's the worst of the worst. So this whole thing is, is a form of manipulation to manip- manipulate people to keep people to not not shine because because sky if i let you shine then maybe the focus isn't on chris martin right you be the small person in the in the chair and just say yes to me you know what i'm saying if you stay the small person and make me the big then i have the big voice i have the big light you're the little dim lights that need to help my light shine No, when he said you are the light of the world, he was talking about the church, the ecclesia, the body of Christ. Together, we are the light of the world. It's not, a, it's not any one person. Are you catching this? So stop, okay, but if, if we're gonna say, if we're gonna say yes, then let's stop hiding and only promoting any one person, including me. Stop hiding and promoting any one because if you're promoting a one and you're not promoting us right then it's it it, it is literally i'm going to say a really ter- bad term it's defecating it's defecating it is literally yeah. doing a disgusting thing yes. to hold us back from being able to bring transformation to the earth we're going to start at the very beginning of this you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Here, here's, here, I've always ran those sentences together. How many has ever heard that, right? You're the light of the world. You're a city set upon a hill. No, that's not what it says. You are the light of the world, period. Then the next sentence is, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. So what is Jesus saying in the second sentence? Positioning matters. You are a light, but if you are at the bottom of the hill, if you're at the bottom of your company, if you're at the bottom of your industry, if you're on the bottom of your team, if you're at the bottom of the league, you're not going to be seen. Position matters. Oh my gosh, are you catching this? Like Jesus identifies, yes, you're a light. That doesn't mean you're on the hill. 
Next sentence, you're the light. Let me tell you something about a light. It can be seen if it's on the top. Wow, Jesus cares about positioning. Jesus cares if you're at the top of a company. Not because he'll be more proud of you, but he wants you. He believes in you. He believes in you. This is not performance-based. This is relational-based. You're a son. You're a daughter. And he's like, I believe in you. I've put everything in you that if you will believe in you the way I believe in you, go ahead and position yourself at the top. Go ahead and put yourself to be influential and to carry influence. Oh, that's all about Jesus. I'm just going to sit at the bottom and have prayer meetings. You know what? I've seen, uh, by the way, I'm seven generations pastor's kid. I watched my family and literally was in a prayer meeting, a very sm- small church, probably the, the sanctuary is probably this size, very tiny church. And, and all of those people went to church together for their whole life. I watched it and they'd have prayer meetings and man, they cried out to God. Lori, the, you want to talk about the best prayer meetings? They were the best prayer meetings. They, they all cried out to God, but guess what happened? They were having shadow boxing. You know what shadow boxing is? You know when the guy puts himself against the wall? I can't see it there. But he puts himself against the wall so he can see his own shadow so that when he swings, he can practice seeing the punch and blocking it in real time because the, um, not not radiancy, but the, um, the, the, the reflection, the speed of reflection though, it's, 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 There's a term for it. Anyways, the speed of reflection, you're trying to get your whole body to be able to react and see out of your peripheral when the enemy's coming at you, right? But the shadow boxing, you know what never happens? You never win. And you never, you never have impact. And you also never get hurt. And this is why shadow boxing is so popular in church I want to look cool look I got the rocky gloves I got the red and white shorts that's me on the golf course right like 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 everybody would think that guy can play golf nope I look like I can play golf though I got the shoes I got the bag I got the clubs I got the stuff I am Mr. Golfer right then I swing Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> so here's the thing is many people show up and they got the stuff. They got the nine pack. They don't just have a six pack. They got the extra two. I can't even find my, I'm like, where are those? Like, I didn't even know those existed, bro. They got a nine pack. They are just bringing it there. They, they got, they're all cut. And you ask them, hey, tell me about your record. Well, I'm O and O. Your Oreos? No, I'm O and O. I have zero wins, but here's the best thing. I've had zero losses. Right? Because that's, that's what I'm looking for in life. I just don't want to lose. And so if I never put myself in the ring, then I never have to lose. If I never put myself in a vulnerable position, and I don't ever, and I'm, I'm never seen, and I'm never heard, and I don't have to, because what if, what if someone blows my light out? I just don't want my light to be blown out. I want to live a life where I shine my light in my prayer closet and speak in tongues really loud. <laughs> and I cast out all the demons in my prayer closet. And, and I have my own little Bible study. And I'm doing so good. And it, f- it feels good to me. Well, how much trans- transformation are you bringing to the world? How much transformation are you bringing to your family? How much transformation are you bringing to your industry? How much transformation are you bringing to your activity? How are you also creating legacy for others to bring trans, trans, um, transformation the way that you're bringing transformation? Or are you bre- breeding a culture of hidden light? 
So I'm going to hide my light because my mom hid her light. My dad hid his light. So I'm not going to put myself out there because I've been conditioned to not position myself because we're a Mexican culture or we're a black culture or we're an Asian culture that should be humble. And I'm not going to, are you hearing me? So I'm, I'm going to position myself not to create debt. Remember we talked about this because it's all about cash and, and right. But yet the, the smartest people in the world are, Anyways, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> Are you hearing me for a second? I'm not going to position myself to be compressed anymore, suppressed anymore. I'm not going to condition myself to be muted anymore. I have one life to live, and Jesus told me to live my life and position myself to be on the top on, yeah. of the mountain. So I'm a light of the world, but I have a choice. And the choice is, do I position myself to go to the top? Here's the second thing that Jesus says. Look at this. He says, you're the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Not only if you're positioned well, are you able to be influenced but when you're positioned well, you cannot be shut down. Oh my gosh. Did you hear this? When you position yourself right, you cannot be shut down. You will not be hidden. You will not be muted. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No government will come against you. No board of education will mute you. No woman's uh, uh, thing, no men's thing, no, no sexual identity stuff. Nothing is going to mute your voice when you're at the top of the mountain. But being at the bottom of the mountain, yelling up at the top of the mountain does you no good. And, 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 and that is what, that's what our prophetic and prayer meetings normally are everybody's at the bottom of the mountain yelling at the top when I wish all of them would just shut up and start climbing mountains. Are you with me? Well, I want to speak to my mountain. Go ahead and speak to it while you're on the top. Whoever told you to speak to it at the bottom? Are you with me? This is so good. You are the light of the world. Your city, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket. Now you got to understand, Jesus didn't have electricity. Hold on. Think about this. Jesus didn't have electricity. So when he was saying no one puts it under a basket, what is a basket made out of? Straw or what? Something flammable. Right? Does, is it not flammable? Oh, <laughs> maybe you have a wooden basket. I don't know. So, but Jesus is talking about no one takes a light, a fire, and puts it under something to hide it when you know if you, this is the point, if you try to hide it incorrectly, you're actually going to destroy something else. Literally, you're going to position your light, your ability to influence, and you put it under the wrong thing. Not only is it going to mute you, but it's going to create an atmosphere of combustion that literally will also not only mess you up, but it messes something else up with you. No one does that. But Jesus, remember children's church? Light it under or hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Okay, none of you went to the children's church. <laughs> it was a thing. So here's the thing. No one puts it under this thing. Number one, not just to not hide it, but to not bring more destruction. You actually hiding your gift is literally not just going to destroy you, but it literally can destroy others. 
Let me give you a good example of that. It is, it is literally the form of abortion. It is taking your gift that God's meant to manifest and instead of allowing it to manifest, you kill it. Did you hear me? It's abortion. You, God created you for this and you chose to put it under and suppress it and compress it and what was supposed to carry people into salvation and deliverance and healing and acceleration and prosperity what was supposed to what God put in you are you with me what God has put in you that was supposed to have so much to it you literally uh, broke the neck off of it and said I won't be that and so not only have you broken you and not only have you hurt you, but everybody that was supposed to catch. What you carry now is unprivileged. Well, we're just going to pray that Jesus brings them in. No, Jesus was praying that you would bring them in. He was praying to his father that Sing Ling would show up. Jesus was praying to God, Jasmine, that Jasmine, he was literally standing at the right hand of the throne of God going, God, make Jasmine brave today. God, visit her in her bed chambers. Make her brave again. God, make her renewed about her fire again. Are, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? God, Jesus is praying that God would use you because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you is God's goodness that is literally needing to manifest. Out of you shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers, not, not, not tinkles. Not, not aerosol sprays. Rivers gushing. Let me ask you a question. Are you gushing? Are you gushing? Here's the question. If we're not being, if we're not gushing, then chances are, and I'm going to get here, chances are we have put someone or something over us. Are you hearing me? We have put someone or something over our life and it's not allowing us to illuminate. Pull out your phones and text yourself real quick. And I want you to write this. I am light. I am light. I need to remove the basket. I don't know what your basket is. I don't know if it's your sleep habits. Maybe that's your basket. Maybe it's your workout habits. Maybe it's your food habits. Maybe it's your day job habits. No, I'm going to get there in a second. We're, we're going to talk about that. I don't know if you have this typed up where I talked about goal, Andy. Do you have goal typed up? No, just, just listen to me and, and type it. Do you have it? Thank you. L look at this. I, I tried to do it dyslexic first, and, th and then I did it the right way second. Let's just talk about the right way because you guys might not ever get this one. Strategies minus obstacles equals goals. Now I'm going to do it backwards for a second. Let's say you have a goal, right? Your goal is to be a 10. Before you could ever accomplish your goal to be a 10, you have to identify your obstacle. So let's, let's just use, let's say 10 is what I want to get to in my physique, right? I want to go from a, a size 46 coat down to a size 42. That is, that is the goal, right? The obstacle is my tub of lard, <laughs> my belly, right? That's the obstacle. The only thing that's stopping me from fitting my beautiful 42 jackets that I had since college is the belly, right? That's the obstacle from it buttoning right? 
So I have the goal, and then I have the obstacle. What do I have to do to overcome the obstacle? I have to build a strategy, right, of dieting and exercise to make the belly go away so that I can fit the 42 jacket. Is this making sense? So if the goal is finances, now listen, I'm going to hit you in the face. Ready? If the goal is finances, if the goal is intimacy, if the goal is thriving, if the goal is prospering, if the goal is being relational, if the goal is having more followers, if the goal is being more influencing, if the goal, what I don't know what the goal is. There's a goal. There is something stopping it. You're going to have to develop a strategy in order to go over the obstacle to meet the goal. Sim- simple al- algebra in my mind. See how it works? It looks ugly. To be, listen, Jesus said in a person would never, I'll go ahead and move so you guys can take pictures if you need to take a picture. A person will never or should never take their light and put it under the obstacle. Whatever is not allowing you to illuminate and shine and be at the top of the mountain, that's your obstacle. Some of you have never identified your obstacle. The thing that doesn't allow you to feel free, the thing that doesn't allow you to feel loud, the thing that doesn't allow you to, that's your obstacle. Are you with me? She looks beautiful. Are are, are you with me? You are going to have to see that that is what Jesus was saying is the basket that is stopping your light from illuminating. And Jesus was saying, who would put their light under this basket? Let me tell you something. You have made wrong choices. I have made wrong choices. And we have put some obstacles over our light. And we know our goal was to shine and be bright and be great and be amazing. But we have done some things and we have put a basket. We've put a basket over our life. And we need to start deconstructing the basket. We need to build a strategy to remove the basket or to unwove the basket or to remove the, are are you hearing me? Some of you, you have people in your life you need to remove. You have habits in your life you need to remove. You have thinking in your mind you need to remove. You have emotions in your heart you need to remove. You have, you have memories in your mind that you need to remove. You have fears in your heart that you need to remove. And and, and by the way, well, how do I remove a fear? Love cast out fear. So you need to put yourself in a position, right? Love, who is Jesus? Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Everyone who loves knows God. He that loves not knows is not God for God is love, right? So Jesus, who is love, I need to put myself in a position to receive his love and his love, his perfect love, because there's a lot of different loves out there. But perfect love cast out fear. How do you know when it's not perfect? It doesn't cast the fear out. How do you know you're experiencing the wrong kind of love? your fear is not being cast out. Your fear is being accommodated. Your fear is being, is growing. So when do you know you're experiencing the wrong kind of love? When fear is not being cast out. And when faith is not growing. What's faith? Faith is the ability to hear God. No, we all know the definition of faith. Faith is a substance of things not seen, the evidence of things, right? We all, we all know the definition. I'm not asking what the definition is. Uh, faith is hearing God. That's what faith is. Being able to hear God. So greater love builds greater communication between us and the Holy Spirit, between us and Jesus, between us and the Father. Greater love. What's greater love 
What does greater love look like? Man, I could just do this all day. What is greater love? There is no greater love than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. Jesus already did it. So, so Paul saying this, he says, oh, that I might know you and fellowship in your sufferings, right? He gets in a place that I got to know you to, to really receive that love. If I don't position myself, catch this, if I don't position myself to really get to know him and I'm just shadow boxing, listen, you can't shadow box and make a baby. You and that shadow are never going to have the love life you need. God said it's not good for man to be alone. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take somebody with you. You are not the light of the world. We are the light of the world. I'm not the light of the world. You're not. We, we, we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. When Jesus said you, he wasn't saying you. He was saying you. <laughs> right? Okay, let's keep going. I'm almost done. You guys Okay. Ah, so you got to, so to be light is to not, number one, not to be hidden. Number two, it's to be positioned properly. Number three needs to be paired with right things. Are you hearing me? It's to be, it's to be paired with the right things and or the right people. How many knows that Jesus comes up to the rich young ruler? The rich young ruler wants to, (laughs) the rich young ruler wants to join the Jesus ministry, right? And Jesus is like, fine, I'll make a 13th disciple. You'll be my 13th guy. I'll put you on staff. Judas, can we pay this guy? "Eh, That's a little tight. That's all right. Let's let's bring him on, right? So he's like, listen, I want to bring you on. You're going to be on my, you're going to be one of my boys. All I need you to do all I need you to do, see all, see all 12 of these guys? Do you see all, all 12 of these guys? Yeah, I see all 12 of those guys. They have left everything. Yeah. This is why we're building a church right now with just us. Slowly, we're going to start inviting people to come in here, but right now we're building it with us because Jesus conditioned guys for three and a half years, 12 guys, and he said, you need to be conditioned to give up everything. Oh, where is it? Uh, Matt, can you or Josh, can you get my cell phone in there? It's on the charger against that wall. Bring it to me as fast as humanly possible. Okay, so listen. You need to be paired with the right thing. A lot of people are not paired to the right, meaning you're not paired to the right job to get to your goal. You're not paired to the right person to get to your goal. You're not paired to the right investment to get to your goal. You are not paired. Are, are you, are, do you understand that it's never just about you? It's about connecting yourself to the right thing. We have connected to this I am movement. I believe that's a right thing. That How many has learned anything in eight weeks? So I think that's all we've been in existence. I, I feel like God's revelation has just flowed and flowed and flowed in every single week. If you go back to the website and listen, you will hear. And then how many has felt a deeper level of worship that has started to rise in this room, right? And, 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 and the freedom of the spirit of God keeps increasing. Listen, we are, we are building and incubating and, and the room's full right now and we haven't even started growing. And there's a lot of people missing. But I'm telling you something real quick. Catch this. This is helping your spirit. But this is not all that you need to be connected to. Because when I'm connected to you, grab my hand, it allows the strength of you that's in place to connect to you. Now, there is something here that because I'm being pulled on, there, there's a momentum, there's a stability, right? There's something happened. Now, I could also pull on you guys, right? And you could pull on me. If I'm only pulled in one direction, I can only go in one direction. Are you catching this? So, the, the, so somebody might bring the right thing for me in my personality and character. Some, someone else might help me with passion. 
Someone else might help me with intimacy. Someone else might help me in my spirituality. Someone else might help me in my physique. Like, like I am building people around me. And by the way, if they're truly people in my life, like Harry Mock, I should be able to pull on them. When we get to a bar and he starts telling me about his blues, if, if he can only pull on me, and I can't pull back and bring Jesus, there's something wrong with that relationship. Are you catching this? If, if every time we're, I'm with you, Carlos, I, have to, I can only have a beer with you and I can never pour the wine of the Holy Spirit, right? If every time I'm with you, we have to have a beer, but I can never pour the wine of the Holy Spirit, that might be a connection that I let you get thirsty for. It might be a relationship I let you get thirsty for. Because every time I'm with you, I can only watch a beer. I can only watch a football game. And we can never go into the Holy Spirit. We can never. It's not reciprocal. You're the one leading me. I'm never leading you. Might be something I go, hmm. Might be something I let go of you and let you get thirsty for me again. And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, dude. You haven't been showing up on Monday nights to watch a football game. I would love, like to, but man, I really want to go to other places with you. I don't ever feel like we ever make room to go deeper than that. Are you catching this? Well, what do you mean? Well, I would love to catch dinner with you and let's talk about it. Right? And by the way, it's not always appropriate to go deep first, right? Me and Harry had years of relationship, years of trust. He believed in me. I believed in him. There was a love. There was a relationship. He's never been to church with me, not once. He's never heard me preach, not once. I don't need him to come to church for me to love him. But I am connected to him. Why? Because he was my connection to investors. He was one of my who's. You need to be paired. You need to be paired with the right who's in your life. That will allow you to get to the top of your mountain so that you can achieve your goal. I am helping you win today. I'm not just helping you win prophetically. I'm helping you win in every area of your life. I'm not just helping you apostolically. I'm not just helping you Pentecostally, if that's even a word. <laughs> I'm not just helping you in any one little segment. I'm, I'm giving you the full Monty because Jesus wants you to have life and life more abundantly. Yeah. All right, here we go. Do, do you, did you have my cell phone? You gave it to me? Wow. You want to talk about ADD, <laughs> Jesus. All right, here we go. Ready? Hold on, you got to hear this. So this man was in Africa. He was in Africa, and um, and he left this pinned against his wall Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 he's as at the top and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart are you with me and then below that was a declaration and the declaration was this the fellowship is committed to doing whatever it takes was the header. Our fellowship is committed to doing whatever it takes. I'm going to have this typed up and I'm going to have this on our website. I'm a part of a fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. I have the Holy Spirit power. The, the die has already been cast. I've stepped over the line. I'm out of my comfort zone. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back. I won't let up. 
I won't slow down. I won't back away. My past is redeemed, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. I am finished and done with low living and sight walking and small planning and smooth knees and colorless dreams and tame visions and, and mundane talking and kinchy, oh, cinchy giving and dwarf goals. I am part of the fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. I no longer need a premise. I no longer need a position. I no longer need promotions. I no longer need popularity. I no longer need to be right. I no longer need to, to have, have to be first. I no longer have to be on top. I don't have to recognize or be praised or rewarded or regarded. I'm part of a fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. I now live by presence. I lead by faith. I love by patience. I lift by prayer. I labor by power. I'm part of a fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. I hope you're hearing this. My face is set. My, my gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few but my guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be compromised, detoured, or lured away. I cannot, I cannot be turned back or deluded. I will not be delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the face of adversity or negotiate at the table of my enemies. I will not ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze called me mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, or burn up until I've preached up, prayed up, paid up, stored up, and stayed up for the cause of Jesus Christ. I am part of a fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until he comes. I must give until I drop. I must preach until all know. I must work until God stops. And when he comes, to get his own, he will have no problem recognizing me because I've dedicated my life to being a part of the fellowship committed to doing whatever it takes. That was really convincing that I'm not where I should be. I didn't feel convicted because Holy Spirit convicts the world. He convinces sons and daughters. He convinces sons and daughters. And I'm convinced that my goals still have obstacles that I have not built strategies for. I am convinced that I'm a bigger light than what I'm currently illuminating. I'm convinced that I am not paired to all the right things or all the right people and I am convinced that I have obstacles that I need to remove I am light we are light but it is time for us to take the mountain Jesus said after he says this after he says that no one would put it under a bushel then he gives the answer Look at this. You are the light of the world. See, um, I'm sorry, verse 15. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and gives it light to all who are in the house. Guess what? You need to find things that will promote you and positioned you to be bright. So some of it is you need to go to the top of the mountain, but other, others of it is you need to pair yourself to people that will posture you for illumination, that they will set you up for success. Are you with me? Here we go. What verse was that? 
15, 16. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they will see your good works. Well, Chris, doesn't the Bible say it's not works? There's two different, there's two different debates that happen in Scripture. One that says it's not works, works without faith is dead, and one that says faith without works is dead. So is it faith or works? Yes. The debate settles one thing. It's faith and it's works. You need both. But I don't care what any apostle said. My Jesus just told me something. Did you catch this? Jesus is perfect theology. And Jesus said, make it, Carlos, that when you close a deal, everybody sees that you closed the deal. Let them see that it happened. Let them see the revenue that you produced. Let them see that your name's always at the top of the letterhead for the company. Let them see that you in that, in that arena, in that, you're catching the most fish, you're killing the most deer, whatever it is, you're there. If, you know what, Dave? I love that you win the car shows. I don't love that you just go to the car shows. I love that you're like top gold ribbon guy. If you're going to do it, as a matter of fact, one of my, one of my spiritual sons, he, he messaged me this morning, happy birthday. Uh, should I say who it, no, I won't, no, I'm going to, he won't care. So Zane, Zane messaged me, happy birthday this morning, and, and um, one of my spiritual sons, and Zane participates in like those strongman events that Spartan races, and, and I'm like, and so he'll travel to God knows where all over to, to participate in these races. And so one day I'm like, so how much money do you get from that? He's like, oh, no, I spend a lot of money. I'm like, oh, so what place do you come in? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, I finished at, the, at this time. I said, well, like, is that third place? Is that fifth place? Oh, no, I was probably like 200, 200. And by the way, Zane's a brick house. Like, remember I talked about nine abs? He probably has 12, <laughs> right, right? Zane has like 12 abs. Uh, Zane, Zane's a brick house. He's a stud. He's amazing. F- former Marine, correctional officer, right? Great guy I've mentored, developed. I'm like, now it made sense for one reason. Otherwise, I was going to tell him to stop. Cynthia, I was almost two seconds away from saying, you're not going anymore. It's dumb. You're taking a Sunday off. You're taking this off. You're taking that off, right? You're not making any money. You're not bringing more money in for your family. Like, you're taking time away from your kids. Two things he said. He said, number one, it's my passion. But number two, it's my community. That's when I was like, "Eh." you keep doing it, bub. I like it. I'm two seconds away from, like, you're done. You're the stupid, stupidest thing in the world. It's like one of my cousins. She was, taking, she was taking a history class. I was like, oh, is that part of your major? She's like, no, I just love history. What? You're taking the history? Oh, you love history? Like, how is it not achieving, like, your master's degree? Your, like, what are we doing? And she, <laughs> she's like, no, I just love history. I can't even imagine that. Like that doesn't, like I can't, if there's not an end, I'm, I don't have a means. I, like I don't, I don't get it. It's not how I was made up, right? I was made a certain way. But whatever. Bottom line is the two answers that he gave me was one, it fulfills passion. That's great because we need that, right? Secondly, he's ministering to a community. He's praying for people not not at first he's not praying for them at first he's just running with them and and falling down and cussing and you know doing something that, he's building community right they're they're seeing his weaknesses and they're seeing his strengths seeing him f- pick up like seven bags of cement you're not getting paid you're not even coming in third place but you're picking okay they're seeing him with endurance and they're taming but guess what? Then one, one was going through a hard time financially. One was going through a hard time relationally. And guess who they reach out to? 
and he was in community and he was able to be light in the world. Yeah, he sat at the bar. He got to lead Harry to, to Jesus. Is this making any sense? It's not the most deep message in the world, but it's the, it is the most message in this moment that is significant. Because if we can really, and by the way, you got to listen to several of these podcasts where I broke this down, how to be light, right? How to maximize, every one of these messages are so important. But if we will start positioning ourselves and removing ourselves from the wrong thing and start attaching ourselves to the right thing, watch, watch the shift of everything God's called you to go to the next level. Kate, will you come? In, in closing, can you bring up that last point, Andy? They're having fun back there. You know what? By the way, if you don't get, get a chance to go back there and tell Jen she's doing a great job, you can tell her she's doing a good job. Um, I really appreciate her and JoJo. JoJo's back there. Jen's mentoring Oh, I thought you were back there. My bad, Jojo. You're here. This is it. Well, she's mentoring you, right? She's she's teaching you how to do some stuff back there. So I'm proud of you. Thank you for being back there. Not right now, but when you're back there. <laughs> she's like, are you not seeing me right now, Chris? I totally see you. Being light will manifest your goodness. Take a picture of this. Being light will manifest your goodness, which is ultimately his goodness your goodness your ability junior one time i had a guy who owed me a ton of money and i had to forgive his debt seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars he owed me and i had to say you know what i forgive you and one of my buddies who's a mentor of mine was like how can you forgive that? How can you forgive that? You can't forgive that. I said, I got to forgive it. If I don't forgive him, God doesn't forgive me. And I was able to demonstrate my goodness. And when I demonstrated my goodness, that mentor of mine was like, you know, I really need to get back with the big guy upstairs. So he calls him. Still to this day, he, he tells me, still to this day, you know, I think the big guy calls him the big guy. I love it. I love it. He's one of my financial mentors since I was 20 years old. And he calls God the big guy. And I knew, I knew him when he wasn't anywhere near the big guy. But I've also now known him. And every time we talk, I've been talking to the big guy about you. I just don't know why he loves me so much, but the big guy loves me. I'm like, you're right, the big guy does love you. You know, Chris, when it's your time, it's your time. I know. He's like, all right. I said, are you trying to tell me something? He's like, no, I'm not. But I'm just letting you know, I'm talking to the big guy. A lot more than I used to. I'm in, communi I'm in community with him. He lives in Nebraska. He doesn't live here. But I'm still in community with him. And even when my light was not the best light when I was younger at 20 years old around him, he's watched my life and he's watched me stay faithful to Jesus and get closer and closer and closer and closer to the Lord. My whole life, he's watched it. He's watched me go through highs. He's watched me go through lows. And I'm not talking to brag today. It is not a bragging message. I know there's a lot of noise in the atmosphere, but if you can hone in on my voice, I'm telling you right now, you have no idea that your goodness will lead someone that you never, if you told me in 1999 that Cliff DeBoer was ever going to be saved and love Jesus and be passionate about someone that I would find out later is called the big guy, I'd have been like, that's never gonna happen. I know Cliff. I've been in bar fights with Cliff. I've watched him beat up like seven guys. 
That's not going to happen. I know him. We've been in Vegas together. We've been in a lot of good and bad places together. I know Cliff. (laughs) God's goodness manifested. And Cliff is in relationship with the big guy. Harry Mock is in heaven today because he watched me go in front of his good friend, an investor, and he watched me be led by the Holy Spirit. He asked me, why did you not talk? Why did you not talk? Why did you not talk? Why did you just sit there and walk around that guy's house and not say a word? He goes, I thought you were going to pitch him. I thought you were going to sell the guy. I'm like, how do you sell a guy with billions of dollars? You know what I did? I did nothing. I just shut up and I said, show me more. And the whole time he's showing me, I'm like, Holy Spirit, I need you to speak because I have no idea what to do here. And then the Holy Spirit told me exactly what to do. And and I'm going to see this doctor today. And Dr. Bob, if you hear this, you know this is true. I sat at Dr. Bob's table. The guy, the guy is one of the most wealthiest people I know and probably one of the most successful men I know. And I'm in Montana, and I sat at his table and I said, you know what? I could offer you this and I can offer you that. And honestly, it means nothing to a guy with your net worth. It means nothing. And I said, I've sat here and I've listened to everything you've accomplished. And all I know is this one thing is I have not accomplished what you've accomplished. And I need someone like you in my life to take me to places I could never go without a guy like you. So I'm not here to ask you what I came to ask you for. I'm here to build a relationship with you. And Harry Mock sat there and was like, did not expect that one. We went to the bar. We went back to the bar. And Harry was like, why didn't you pitch him? Why didn't you tell him about the investment? Why didn't you do what we came here to do? I said, because I didn't come here for a small fish. I just got the whole lake. And then he goes, that's exactly right. He goes, I've never seen him embrace somebody and accept somebody and all the deals I've ever brought him. He's never said yes, not once, not one time. But you sat there, and I, see, Lee, I didn't say a word. I just said, Holy Spirit, tell me, tell me, tell me. Hurry, please tell me. Hurry, tell me. I'm wasting, like, I went through four hours of not saying a word. He'd say, so why are you here? Don't worry about it. Just keep showing me stuff. I did that for four hours. You know how much discipline? If you, if you knew the immature me, I would have tried to write then and there. Well, here's what i got to do today, right? You know how much discipline it wasn't to perform or, or try to pitch or try to just, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please, please. You know how weak my flesh is, Holy Spirit. I'm like a, let's go, right? No, no, no. Come on, come on, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Four hours. And he just shows me all of his, all of his goodness. And then the Holy Spirit drops exactly what to say, Andy. Exactly what to say. And now me and Dr. Bob are friends. Now Dr. Bob sits on my board. And now Harry's in heaven. And the relationship that Harry cultivated his whole life, I get to receive the inheritance of. You have no idea. You have no idea how much your light is supposed to illuminate. And how you're supposed to be on the top of a mountain. And you've been sitting at the base of the mountain. I want you to stand with me this morning. You've been, setting, you've been setting at the base of the mountain too long and you haven't been positioned right with the people that you're in connection with and relationship. You haven't been positioned right. How many knows that day's over? Today. The Bible says today's a day of salvation. Today is a day I need to get saved. I need to get saved. Well, saved means you're not going to hell. No, that's not what it means. If I'm going, it means sozo. It means delivered. It means more healed. It means more empowered. It's not just fire insurance. Oh, I don't go to hell. Yet that's 90, 95% of every Christian I know that has really bad doctrine. That's their whole thing. Fire insurance. I'm not going to hell. That's just life. That's not life and life more abundantly. They got one piece of it. Yay, God, I'm glad. We're all going to heaven with them. That 95%, we're going to go to heaven with them. They'll be there. I'm so glad they're going to be there. 
But there is a remnant, there is an army in which God wants to raise up to bring transformation. That education needs transformation. Business needs transformation. Our government needs transformation. Our sports needs transformation. Our medical industry needs transformation. Our humanitarian, our agricultural, our science and technology, we, we, our capitals markets, our families need transformation. Our families need transformation. I'm going to say it again. Our families need transformation. We need phenomenal men. We need phenomenal women. We need to raise phenomenal children, right? There's a lot of transformation. The opportunity is not small. The arts need transformation. I'm going to be at a red carpet event with grandmasters from all over the world today. The arts needs transformation. And you know what? You could count yourself out and say, what would I have to give? I, this, Harry Mock was a grandmaster connected to Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, and guess what? God used me. God didn't use, God didn't use elevation music. God didn't use, uh, and I love elevation music. God didn't use uh, Bethel. God didn't use um, T.D. Jakes. God didn't use anybody. God used me. Might as well put your name on it, Daniel. It could have been you if you'll put yourself in a position. If you'll identify, I got a goal and I have an obstacle. So let me start working and deconstructing that obstacle. Get a strategy. Overcome the... It's time. How much longer are you going to wait to overcome the obstacle? Chachi, it's time. Carlos, it's time. Cynthia, it's time. I can say every person's name in the room. It's time. You're not a human doing. You're a human being. Be light. Stop trying to do. Stop trying to be something you're not. Start being who you are. Here we go. Heavenly Father. Ha, ah, Jesus, we love you. There is no pride in this. There is no arrogance in this. There is none of that. We're just cutting out all the fat of false humiliation, false thinking, and we are streamlining and saying, Jesus, you have fearfully and wonderfully created every person in this room. Jesus, thank you. You have fearfully and wonderfully created every person in this room. Thank you that you have not made one mistake in any one creation in this room. That you're really, you believe so much in every person. And you are wanting the manifestation of their light to start to shine like it's never shined before. God, I pray first and foremost that there would be unity in this room. I pray first and foremost right now. Come on, will you just pray that? God, build this to be a community. Build this to be a community. I want you to pray for the I Am movement right now. Take 30 seconds and pray. God, put your anointing, put your mantle, put your fire. God, breathe on this. That everyone who walks in this room that's supposed to be part of this would attach and bring their gift. Bring their gift. God, and their gift will make room for them. God, I pray that they would bless to be a blessing. You would bless them to be a blessing. God, if you could get it through them, you'll get it to them. I pray you would start to illuminate people. You would raise the volume in their voice. Raise the volume in their personality. Raise the volume in their gift set. Raise the volume in their vision, their hearing. Raise the volume in their ability to pray, to prophesy. Raise the volume in their ability to do signs and wonders and miracles. Come on, room. Don't just think about this. Pray. Use your words. Use your words as though it was for your children or your children's children. Use your words. Oh, and come.
come out of hiding, you're safe here with me. No need to cover what I already yeah, see. You've got your reasons, but I hold your peace. And you've been on lockdown, but I hold the key. Wow. Oh, cause I loved you before. I knew what was love, and I saw it all. Still, I chose the cross, and you were the one that I was thinking of when I rose from the grave. Now, rid of your shackles, my victory's yours. Yeah. Cause I tore the veil for you to come close. There's no reason to stand at a distance anymore. You're not far from home. And I'll be your lighthouse when you're lost, I see. And I will illuminate everything. And no need to be frightened by intimacy. Just throw off your fear and come running to me. Because oh, I loved you before you knew what was love. And I saw I chose the cross Cause you were the one That I was thinking of When you rose From the grave Now rid off your shackles My victory's yours I tied to the veil For you to come close There's no reason to stand At a distance anymore You're not far Carlos from Come here, bring your future wife with you for a second. Stay right there. I want to talk to you. Tell me your name again. Maria, I'm going to talk to you first. Maria, God is, this whole message, God's been like, yes, 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 to the prayer that you've prayed privately. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so this is a new, this is, this is like I hear the gun being shot. And where you f have felt caged in, you're about to run open. And the Lord says, don't just stay on the track that got built for you. Wherever you run, you'll win the race. <laughs> Wherever you run, you're built to win the race. And God says he loves your tenacity. And some have said, but you're a woman. Some have said different things and tried to compress and suppress. And God says, that's never the right thing for you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. this is a season in which it's okay to get off the track because the track was built by a man. He's like, but I'm putting you on my path and that's made by God. Carlos, the Lord says you lack nothing. I just want you to close your eyes and put your hands out and receive this. The Lord told me, Carlos, that you lack nothing. You don't need more education. You don't need more this or more that. And the enemy's tried to lie to you and torture you in your mind and says you're not enough. And the Lord says you're more than enough because you have the spirit of the ancient one. You have all of humanity's history in God's piece of DNA. And when he shed his blood, his DNA was shed for you and that you carry the DNA of heaven. 
That's why when you release that sound out of your guitar, you're releasing the sounds of heaven. But God says even like that, that you didn't have to be taught from another man. You didn't have to be taught that. God says, I instructed your fingers. I've instructed. You've hit notes you never knew how to hit. You've done things you never knew how to do. And I, I use that as a testimony that that's how I work in you. And it's not meant to be limited only to music. It's, it is in everything, in finance, in literally in, in the, your knowledge to do entrepreneurial feats that the desire of your heart to go large and to carry legacy that your family will be, you will build a legacy, an empire. The Lord says an empire, an empire is what I see. I see an empire on you. <sighs> ah. Wow. I bless you to bring the kingdom. Power and authority. I bless you to, to bring dominion. And I bless you. I bless you to run on his path. I bless you. Come on, let's just worship Jesus for a second. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just worship Jesus. There's no need to cover what I already see. Because you got your reasons, but I hold your peace. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because you've been on lockdown, but I hold the key. Because yeah. I loved you before you knew who was loved. And I saw it all, still I chose the cross Cause you were the one that I was thinking of When I rose from the grave Now we're in our fuel shack Cause my victory is yours Cause I tore the veil for you to come close There's no reason to stand at a distance anymore You're not far Andy I just want you to put your hands in front of you. I want you to close your eyes. And the Lord showed me that it's your season to use the grace that God has not just put you in front of certain people for no reason. But God is going to teach you to steward the grace and to pull them in and pull them out. There's, I, I hear two things. One, God is using you to pull people out of places they're not supposed to be, and and you have you have words of influence that they will come out if they hear your direction. But not only will they come out, but Jesus has never wanted just leaving you as an orphan to pull you out of something without attaching you to something. And God is saying you also carry the ability to pull them in. And in this next season, God is going to show you not just how to pull out. Like, like at times you'll give a, a, a direction, even a prophetic unctioning of how to solve the problem. It's not just about solving the problem. It's about attaching them to the, the goodness of God. And there's going to be a, just a whole a, a, an uptick in spiritual encounters. There's an uptick in spiritual encounters that God is about to bring. So Josh, just touch him right on his lips. <laughs> yeah, two fingers on his lips. I bless your lips. I redeem them from speak, no death, only life. No death, only life. You will only speak life. You will only bring the solution. Ah, ta. Ha, I see that phone in your house. I see that phone in your job. I see, ah, shut ta. I see, wow, more God. 
Lord Jesus. Cynthia, can you stand? God showed me you like a boomerang. That you've been to places and that you've been away from them. And the Lord's saying, you never went anywhere on accident. In this season, all those places that you boomeranged from is going to make sense in this season. In this season, you will pull an army, an army. The Lord says, stop thinking of yourself in the middle of the army or in the back of the army, but position yourself on the horse in front of the army. I saw you on a white horse in front of an army. And you would normally position yourself in the midst of the army as part of the team. But God is saying, stop, stop positioning yourself in the wrong place. You're not riding the high horse because you put yourself on there. God's put you on there. And there are so many places that you have boomeranged. And you thought, do I just keep missing it? Do I keep missing it? Every time do I miss it? You're not missing it. You had to sprinkle the DNA that, that has cultivated hunger all through the valley. But now's the time that the hunger can be met. Seeds of hunger have been planted. Now seeds of, or, I'm sorry, now the harvest of fruition. God's saying in this season, you will, you will raise and you will call. And the armies will come from, and I see different mountains, different houses. They'll come and they'll gather behind your horse. I'm even going to say this very selfishly. This house needs that army. Intercessors and prophets. Because it can't do what it's supposed to do without that army. This house will have many different clans. But that clan is a foundation. Carlos, if you could go to the guitar... I need you to. Just put your hand on her belly. Yes. The baby's been carried long enough. The cry of the mother will bring the armies out of the womb. The cry of the mother will bring the armies out of the womb. Cry of the mother. Wow, there's a sound that you'll release. You'll, there's a sound you'll release and people will be drawn to the goodness of God. But first they'll be drawn to your goodness. First they'll be drawn to your goodness. I need you to somewhat take a little bit more. Yeah. I said the foundation of prophets and intercessors, but the other is, is worship. Go ahead, turn on your recorder. I'll wait. <laughs> Jesus is okay for recording pauses. Intercessors, prophets, and worship. Say that again. Yeah, the Levites. In this house, it is so foundational and God says you have grown and every week you keep growing uh, I saw uh, I know your hair is done I, I love your hair today but You, you look like a warrior worshiper. And not everything has to be loud. As a matter of fact, some things are just beautiful, quiet, and still. And then some things are beautiful, loud, and boisterous. And some things are... 
but going with those waves of wherever Holy Spirit goes. And that's, and I see you go, like going, like figuring it out. And I know your past and I have foreknowledge of your past, but you are ordained with me on the same platform as a preacher, as a pastor. But this is your pulpit. And that thing, that sound, that light, today I saw you bright. And literally, God is taking you on a journey not just to do worship, but you will also preach worship. He's going, he's, go ahead and let go of the piano for a second. Come here. Good, Josh. Come here. Just close your eyes. And Everybody else, just stretch your hands up. Mm. He's put you on a journey where you're like, I can't believe I'm this far behind when you started. <laughs> but he had to show you that how to cultivate the land. How to cause the land to ha be a soft soil. How to dig and plow. And that it would actually be a work. Because you can't preach it if you've never done it. So God keeps promoting you and elevating your voice, elevating your sound. But it's not about performance, Caitlin. You know that. It's your heart. It's your alone time with him. And I love your vulnerability and being real because I'm with you. There's so many times I'm not spending enough alone time with him. It's just not. I need to. But he loves your heart. Because he's never not with you. And he never is not talking. And he's never not listening. So even when I feel like, oh, I'm not doing this dedicated thing, he's broken that off my life. I've learned how to just constantly be praying, constantly listening. I, I've lived in his bosom. <laughs> Woo! You get to go there more and more and more and more uh, in the bosom of the Lord. Ah, oh, there's such goodness there. Such goodness there. Yeah, your light is literally, there's going to be a fire. There's going to be a fire of worship, fire of preaching of worship. There's going to be a book of worship. It's way bigger than you thought. Way bigger than you thought. You had to walk away from some people. You had to walk away from some people. <laughs> you had to walk away from some people. Ha! So that your light can shine. They were stopping your light. Ah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Daniel Sky, will you come right here? You've been my boy a long time. Sky, I love you. Now I can't imagine life without you. <laughs> but I felt like the whole time, I wasn't even thinking about you when the Lord gave me this message, but the whole time I was preaching it, all I could think is, it's your time. Start believing in you the way he believes in you. She believes in you. 
everyone believes in you. Now it's time for you to believe in you. For the bigger stuff. For the bigger stuff. <sighs> Come on, just stretch your hands to Jesus. We just were, man. Bigger stuff. I bless you and say you carry the goods. You carry the goods, and I got you. As a, as a spiritual father, I got you. But I bless you that you do carry the goods. You don't need anybody else. You carry the goods. Position yourself. She can handle the risk. <laughs> you have the support. I know. Don't hide to not fail. Put yourself in the ring and find out you're the champion. Ah, Jesus. Hey, Atta, come on, just try, Jesus. We just bless that. Bless the warrior. We bless the champion. We bless the David. It's your time to go fight some Goliaths. It's your time to take a head. Mm, I bless your ability to speak faith. High ability, your ability to hear God, your ability to speak God. I bless your voice. I bless that you will not be hidden behind him. Ha, but the Lord has brought you and elevating you as well in this season. And not one without the other and not the other without the one. But there is a dual blessing. And the Lord says for you to come. Wow. Oh. Come up. Come up. The dreams are going to become rapid in the next six months. And every one of them are going to have significance. The Lord blesses your dreams. The Lord blesses your dreams. Your dream life is where you're going to hear his voice clearly because you're, you're going to be able to shut down your emotions and shut down the logistics, and the Lord's going to let you hear ha more than you've ever heard before. Yeah, I bless you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, we love you. What was your name again? Mike. When, when the Lord showed me the basket while I was preaching, he said he's deconstructing that with you. Anything that has tried to overshadow you in the wrong way, he loves your heart for deconstructing it. And he's like, He's doing it with you. You're not alone. Your brightest day is ahead of you. I see you like Hosea. The latter house will be greater than the former house. Yeah. The latter house will be greater than the former house. I'm just going to bless that. Jesus, we thank you. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, but God, we thank you. We thank you that your promises are yes and amen. <laughs> and to the one who has started a good work in him, we just bless you that you are so faithful to complete it. You're so faithful. God, I thank you that you're elevating him and his goodness and he won't 
fall behind the shadow of God, but know that you're the light that is illuminating his light. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So proud of you being here today. Yeah, you're welcome. Come on, let's just all lift our hands. Heavenly Father, we love you. 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 We love you, Jesus. Thank you for today, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your spirit. Jesus, thank you for your spirit. When I get the shakes and I'm sharing because I'm either cold or it's because Holy Spirit is speaking to me. I don't know who needs to hear this, but um, some of you know that I'm a marriage and family therapist. And when I started my practice years ago, I remember driving to my office to put up my credentials and all that. And my husband at the time drove me there. And on the way there, my heart was so heavy. I was so grieved, and I didn't understand why, because I was so excited to start this work, and I felt like this was what God was calling me to. And I, I don't understand why it was so heavy, but there was also this excitement at the same time. And years later, I find out that God was preparing me. He was going to break my heart for the things that break his heart. Mm. And through the the past years I've had some changes in my life with my family and kids and friends and this past week there's been some moments that's been really really heavy when I've sat with people in my office and outside and they're so broken and they're so hurt and my heart breaks for what breaks theirs yeah and I just sometimes I'm running or I'm walking and I feel like Holy Spirit speaks to me and I said, Lord, why? And he says, beloved, I've got them because I love them more than you can ever love them. Yeah. You're doing my work and I've got you. People are going to reject you because of what you represent, because you represent me and that's okay, but I've got you. And I know in this room we have so many pain and so many hurts right now. I just want to say that God's got us. Let's do something. I want you. To, I want every person to just put your hand on your heart and sing, Ling. I just want you to pray that. Pray that God would do the work that He just showed you that He wants to do right now in hearts. Lord Jesus, it's so hard when we sit in Your brokenness and we see the work around us. We see what needs to be done, and there's such a sense of dread sometimes. And I know that. That's because you're calling us to do your work, Lord. Yeah. You want to demonstrate yourself in us and the things that we do. And people are going to reject us and people are going to turn away. But just we just know that that's from you, Lord, and that's okay because our light's going to shine and the people, the right people are going to see that. And it's going to help us, Lord, to help us draw us closer to you so that we can build a community and help the people that are broken around us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's good. So, Lord, we just bless that. Huh. That you're prospering hearts to come and receive healing. Receive deliverance. 
and receive the power of your goodness in Jesus' name. Come on, keep your hands on your hearts. Heavenly Father, I just declare today, today you are doing a power work. And Lord, I could prophesy to every single person in this room, and we could be here for three more hours, but God, I declare right now an open heaven has begun. And Lord, it's, it's, it's also an aggravation on purpose that the Lord's saying, I am, I am literally wanting to develop your hunger and your thirst. I am wanting to develop your hunger and your thirst where you'll never be thirsty again. Ha! Huh. And so I bless your week. I declare the favor of God on you. I declare that God is going to open doors that no man can shut. And God is going to shut doors that no man can open. I bless you with wisdom and knowledge and understanding, the favor with God and the favor with man. I declare an anointing upon you that removes burdens and destroys yokes, that every yoke that has tried to attach itself to your mind, will, and emotions would completely be destroyed. And every burden would be removed. And I pray that every mantle that, that is given by man that you are supposed to align yourself with, you would start to see a strategy. And I pray that the strategies of heaven to overcome obstacles. Come on, I, I have to pray that prayer right now. Will you just put your hand on your mind right now? Lord, I just declare that every strategy from heaven that is ordained to overcome the obstacle, to achieve the goal. You've put a goal, you put a vision in everyone's heart, God, I pray you start to give the strategy to overcome the obstacle. But we have to look the obstacle straight in the face. You have to not be fearful of the obstacle. And you have to know what the obstacle is in order to overcome it. If you do not identify the obstacle, you cannot build a strategy to overcome it. So we do not glorify, magnify, or focus on the enemy. But we do... We do our due diligence on the obstacle that is in front of us. And we don't get a strategy of ourselves, but we hear from the Lord. Like the Goliath in front of you, you might think it would be with a spear or a sword, but God will lead you to a brook and give you five smooth stones. He will give, listen, I declare who you authentically are is going to be all that is needed. Who you authentically are is what is needed. You don't need to put on another man's armor, but you need to identify the obstacle. In Jesus' name, I declare, no weapon formed against you is going to prosper this week. You're going to be fine. Matter of fact, you're going to be more than fine. You're going to be phenomenal. <laughs> you're going to be phenomenal. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I love you. Not next Sunday, but Sunday after next. I am going to... Uh, we're... Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear PC. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love all you a lot. Thank you so much. Love you too. Ah, oh, broke my heart. All right. Love you guys. And remember, two weeks, Jersey Sunday. Next week, we're back here.